This lecture is aimed to the topic mapping of energy water based critical points and uh, this was prepared under the teaching unit sustainability uh, with the aim to be taught on all four levels. Education level four should be able to name the conventional technologies in vegan food production and processing regarding the energy water based critical points and uh, on the seventh uh, education level we expect that the learning outcomes would be planning management of mapping energy water waste critical points in conventional technologies having also an overview of the new technologies and to measure the efficiency regarding those critical points. Uh, concerning uh, environmental footprint, we have to discuss sustainable production uh, in the view of the life cycle assessment, which should include minimization of energy and water use, and of course, uh, minimization of waste production. This will be related to the CO2 footprint, water fraud footprint, and uh, the amount of waste. And why is this so important? Uh, we have to reduce uh, food waste, uh, also at home as an individual. And um, concerning this, water, energy, and food are considered as essential for human well-being and uh, related to the sustainable development. And the project, uh, projection suggests that the demand for fresh water, energy and food will arise based on a demographic change, economic development, international trade, and the Green Deal is here really important issue. So here are listed the conventional food processing uh, methods, a lot of them that can be uh, discussed in detail, as well as the advanced processes that are uh, developed even Here under the text, what is life cycle assessment is given a link that will lead to an explanation uh, for each uh, educational uh, level what the life cycle assessment is and um, the most uh, crucial will be to uh, discuss uh, the life cycle assessment on an example as here is given uh, the same product milk in different uh, types of packaging but the life cycle uh, assessment uh, has to be uh, seen through the eyes of life cycle impact assessment. So to see what will have an impact on the environment and uh, which resources have to be discussed. So again, given examples will show um, what kind of emission we could have and of course these are very good topics that could be uh, even assignments for a seminar for the student uh, in a teamwork or uh, as an individual. Concerning only one greenhouse gas as CO2 footprint, we can see that uh, the sustainable and uh, designed uh, education will give us an introduction to the life cycle assessment in the form of a cycle where we are starting from the raw material that will be manufactured, distributed, the user will uh, produce waste as well as each part of mentioned uh, sections and then we can discuss which part of this cycle has produced the most uh, CO2 uh, equivalent per kilogram of the product. All this is uh, in the aim to have a green deal that is a task of the European Commission 
uh, helping us to minimize the greenhouse gases emission, to minimize water use, and as well to minimize waste production. Where and how the critical points can be observed is given on this slide where we have the greenhouse emission trends and the projections uh, under the scope of uh, ESD. And um, to achieve those goals, we have to reduce the use of chemical pesticide, uh, reduce the nutrient losses, reduce sales of antimicrobials and uh, increase the uh, use of uh, agricultural land under organic farming. To achieve the learning outcomes uh, presented on the beginning of this presentation, uh, we will allow our students to develop interpersonal and intrapersonal uh, skills through group work or individual by finding some information in scientific or professional papers. So if one of the topic would be a carbon cycle, uh, it would come out that CO2 is one of the greenhouse gases, but not the only one because agriculture is a large source of the greenhouse gases, uh, methane, uh, nitro oxide, and um, the emission from food production uh, is expressed as kilogram of carbon dioxide equivalent. So uh, here are also listed some other greenhouse gases that will uh, be uh, an issue that will be related with the critical points in the life cycle assessment. One third of global greenhouse gas emission comes from food system and uh, one third of this comes from the land use and uh, this second third uh, is coming from the agricultural production. Food processing, transport, packaging, retail and uh, consumer preparation is much lower uh, in the global greenhouse gas emission. But on the end, we see again um, around 9% till 11 greenhouse gas emission from the waste. So this is the reason why one of our aims is to reduce the waste content. Uh, the carbon footprint can also be explained using those links given here, but always we see the same uh, impact of uh, the energy sources uh, from, from transportation, and emission from waste. Regarding the food, we see that greenhouse gas emissions produced by foods during uh, production uh, raise concerning different types of food. With high protein uh, levels, the gas emission will also raise. So, uh, vegetables will have the lowest um, emission and it raises to the final production of uh, meat products and meat as well. If the protein-rich foods um, are compared uh, based on the CO2 footprint, uh, the Comparison could be done by um, comparing production of 100 grams of protein from a certain uh, food. So producing 100 grams of protein from nuts will emit minus 0.8 kilogram of CO2 equivalent on average, meaning that having a nut tree, we will also be able to remove 
a part of CO2 from the air. So this is the positive effect. But we can see here that the white dots that present the average move and uh, to the right and producing 100 grams of protein from beef uh, emits 25 kilograms of CO2 equivalent on average, but uh, it ranges from 9 to 105 kilograms CO2 equivalent. Uh, the number 9 is uh, when we consume beef that is produced locally. But if the beef has been uh, transported from the other part of the world, then it will raise to 105. So this is the wide range that show us that uh, even the protein rich food has a wide range and it has to be discussed again through the transport, manufacturing and so on. And how to go green if we are uh, a food technologist, if we are uh, in relation with food. So we have here some examples where we can see what is included in the carbon footprint and where the intervention could be done. But also we see here some examples uh, where um, is presented the trend of greenhouse gas emission uh, by agriculture in the Netherlands. And we see here a period of time of uh, over 20 years where uh, the CO2 equivalent uh, was uh, falling down, as well um, as some other uh, equivalents. So we see that it is possible to decrease it, but we also see a slight decrease again, based on the mm, production that has risen as well. Again, one example how to compare here, to compare the need of water uh, and how can we reduce the water footprint. And here we see that if we consume uh, uh, veggies and fruits, our uh, water footprint will be lower. So hamburger that has um, protein rich uh, food in it, meat, will need much more water than if we have only a salad. And it uh, here, uh, it's presented in uh, gallons, but uh, depending is it uh, the American or uh, British uh, gallon, we can recalculate it to the liters of water by multiplying it with uh, 3.7 or 4.5, depending on which gallon we are talking about. And here again, we see that the food energy water nexus is an important issue. And uh, we have some links between each feature identified and explained here. So the food is food chain is related with the environment, with water resources, and um, uh, interconnection between water consumption, environmental protection, and enhancing food productivity within the concept of water food environment nexus is uh, presented here based on the main topic, and this is sustainability. The cycles will differ, but always energy, food and water will be related um, and we have some interaction between them. So each educational level based on the learning outcomes can be discussed in more detail than uh, it is presented here. Uh, the virtual water uh, footprint can be presented in the form of conceptual models as it is, it is here given. 
and uh, the virtual water also is called uh, embedded water or uh, indirect water in the water um, is hidden in the product, uh, the service uh, and process uh, that uh, will be uh, bought by our uh, consumer or end user, uh, and we are using it every day. Although uh, this uh, hidden water uh, goes uh, unseen by the end user of uh, product or service, uh, that water has been consumed uh, through the value chain uh, which makes creation of the product or service possible. Uh, this meaning uh, has become common, although in, uh, dif it differs from the technical and historical definitions, but uh, of which are discussed below uh, here, given with this example, virtual water. And we see that we have the production of goods, we have some uh, electricity or uh, manufacturing uh, production, we have uh, food and crops coming from the agriculture part, we have some transportation, and uh, all uh, these parts will be uh, implemented in the final water footprint. So again, a different example where uh, the size of a drop will show how much water uh, is used to produce a certain food product or uh, some other parts, uh, different models which show uh, how many liters are needed to produce some certain food. Sustainable food production um, is uh, observed through the food use, food demand, agricultural demand, um, environmental pressure of uh, the agriculture and effect of sustainability. In all these parts we can observe the possibility of minimization of uh, the footprint uh, and waste. Uh, also the sustainable food cycle is observed through production, processing, distribution, consumption and recycling. And the um, sustainable food production system uh, has certain potential and the um, food production system is um, varying from region to region. Um, man maintaining uh, a sustainable food production chain is now more important to food producers than ever before. Um, here um, is the main focus and current uh, challenge given to the food production systems, such as greenhouse gas effect, increasing nutrient use efficiency, uh, water use, uh, maintaining and restoring uh, soil fertility and um, we see that uh, protein-rich food is now observed more closely. Here is given the overview what is meant under wasted food. We see that we have some food losses as well food waste. The food waste will also be uh, a part of a meal that we haven't consumed or uh, was not eaten, but was intended to be food. So how to minimize these effects where we have a lot of wasted food that has to be consumed, but is not in the form to be consumed. This is our reality and we have to do something. Here are uh, presented some actions uh, to make food production more sustainable and um, it can be done to the supply chain um, on the local level. Uh, we have uh, 
considerable losses and waste through a food system that can be uh, listened in material flows that can be moved uh, uh, toward reducing, uh, reusing, recycling uh, linear food system into more cir circular ones. And um, um, the meaning of sustainable diet becomes more important because uh, diversifying um, should include um, different groups of food uh, and the ecosystem uh, should be uh, more focused on win-win strategy. Uh, we see how here um, that often I used words like reduce, optimize, design, increase, appropriate use, implementation, um, certification, technical strategies. So these are the uh, main issues that have to be used in the minimization of uh, greenhouse gas emission as well as um, to uh, reduce the waste. An example now coming to uh, the point sustainable diet is also the food classification system. Uh, the score is calculated, uh, calculated by taking into account the foods and uh, nutrients, uh, the recommendation of fibers, proteins, uh, content of fruits and vegetables, but also the nutrients to, um, uh, that, that should be limited as um, calories, saturated fats, sugar, salt, and everything is calculated per 100 gram of the food. So here we have a score that is called Nutri-Score. Uh, it um, is viewed by many as much um, as weakness, but as a strength as it does um, not take into account the degree of food processing, nor the presence of additives such as uh, artificial uh, sweeteners, uh, coloring, and so on. And this is the reason why the second uh, score was presented, and this is the NOVA score. Um, and uh, those scores uh, are presented to give the consumer the ability to decide which food he would like to consume, being aware that it has an impact on the um, environment. So, uh, considering the NOVA score, we have here four groups, one to four. The green group is one, presenting unprocessed or mainly processed food. Uh, the yellow one is uh, processed culinary uh, ingredients. Uh, and the last one that is red uh, is presenting ultra processed foods. So the consumer can decide which of these processing groups are in accordance with their uh, standards. The tables how it is calculated are presented here and uh, regarding if we have uh, food or beverage we will use here certain uh, points that um, give the final nutri score and uh, based on the content of energy, uh, sugar, saturated fats, content of sodium, a share of fruits or vegetables, fibers and proteins, we have on the end a final note that is here presented on a product where we have uh, a product, the same product, based on different ingredients that falls in the category E and one is the category B. 
So uh, these given examples will um, give the opportunity to our students to learn from uh, problem-based learning and project-based learning. So uh, they will uh, again develop their intrapersonal and interpersonal skills by finding something that is important for their uh, future jobs. So again, one example of two spreads that could be seen through the glasses of the Nutri and Nova score, where the students, based on the content given on the labels, can calculate the Nutri score and the Nova score as well. And here, again, we have the ability to discuss why one product uh, has a better score in the yellow range and the other one in the uh, red range. And what is the main cause of it? Because our uh, students will be able to understand this and to give such information to the end user, the consumer. So some examples of footprint calculators are given here on the link where the life cycle assessment is investigating it uh, in, a, in a form of numbers. And uh, as we had previously seen an example of the CO2 footprint, here uh, it's the food footprint and we see that we are not anymore with nuts in the negative section but we see again that we have a high uh, range a wide range from a low impact to a high impact and here maybe for all of us a very good example that the chocolate bar from the deforested uh, rainforest emits more than a serving of low impact beef. So uh, knowing that, that fact, we uh, become more um, aware consumers of the food. So how it looks in numbers. Here, uh, if we eat twice a day uh, a slice of bread, uh, how will my food choice impact the environment. This is the given example on this link that is given here on this slide. So we see that over a year of consuming two slices of bread per day, it will produce uh, so much greenhouse gas emission that could be translated or compared with uh, a car driving almost 180 kilometers or um, heating for six days for a home and so on. But we also have an overview with the same uh, food category uh, here, uh, star starches rich food so compared bread and rice we see that our impact it is much lower than consuming the uh, twice a day a cup of rice uh, in in the same time so here again an example where we can influence our final consumer by giving some uh, examples. This is uh, an example from daily uh, news in Croatia, where the consumers are advised to use their uh, bags or um, something to bring their uh, foods from the store to, uh, to their home, avoiding to use plastic bags uh, prepared for uh, vegetables uh, or meat, whatever they are buying. And um, we have presented on the beginning that uh, different education levels have to um, have different learning outcomes. 
And for the last uh, educational level for university students, uh, we would like them to use some softwares to calculate uh, the emission of greenhouse gases as well to see in which parts of the production they can minimize it and um, go more green. Uh, to be able to calculate this, uh, they can use some free databases in the calculation of a life cycle assessment. The list is given here, but uh, also different uh, databases that are commercial can be uh, seen here and the prices differ based on the content uh, and the number of uh, foods in it and uh, different regions. So here uh, also some commercial uh, databases and what can then be calculated. So here is an example where um, we have a sandwich that uh, has a final environmental score given 0.6 per kilogram of sandwich. But here we can uh, see the impact by life cycle stages as well as impact by ingredients. So the life cycle stage is showing us that agriculture is the main major factor contributing to the environmental score. But uh, observing impact of ingredients, we see that here something else is the main issue, protein uh, rich food, in this case chicken meat followed by uh, some steps uh, that are used here in the production. And we also see how much CO2 equivalent per kilogram of this product is produced. So we see different uh, life cycle stages, influence of ingredients, and now we have the ability to change something to see if we will be able to minimize a certain impact in these uh, observed uh, stages. And why is this important? Here is an example uh, given by uh, Nestle uh, and they have uh, prepared their uh, zero uh, roadmap where uh, they have a plan of emission reduction by certain year and uh, till the end of 2050 they would like to have a zero uh, emission. How will they achieve it? They have shown it in this uh, presentation. They have um, prepared and they have uh, observed as in the previous example was presented, every stage of the life cycle assessment and each gradient and how can it be uh, minimized. And here are listed their milestones uh, given in numbers and their plans. So, um, they have recognized that advanced agricultural techniques will deliver a um, um, regenerative food system uh, at scale and supported by zero emission logistics and company operations, it will be possible to achieve it. And their plan is to balance any remaining emission through high quality natural climate solution that benefit people and the planet. So knowing uh, the aim, we can plan where and how uh, these deliverings could be achieved. Um, again, observing greenhouse uh, gas emission, we see how much it is uh, emitted in the land use and what can be changed. 
when we produce crops and feed as well when we transport it, if we have the agriculture, aquaculture and livestock, where and how uh, are the mean points and what uh, are the main production stages and how we shift between the stages, where and how can the CO2 equivalent per 100 gram of proteins be produced or uh, minimized. And everything is leading to have lower footprints that are the measure of environmental impact that is associated with the growing production, transporting and storing of uh, food. Uh, from the natural resources consumed to the pollution produced to the greenhouse gases emitted. It is much easier if we have an example. So using this link for the footprint uh, calculator, we can see um, some offer uh, for breakfast. It can be tofu scrambled or eggs with bacon and toast. And now is the question, who has a higher footprint that is observed here? Here we have 900, uh, 900 uh, nine, uh, grams of CO2 equivalent, but here something that is rich in proteins has a lower uh, footprint. If I uh, mention that cereals with banana have almost 1,200 gram CO2 equivalent, it confuses us. Because in the previous slide, we have also pointed out that protein-rich food is the main cause of um, the influence on the environment. So in this case, we have some food that is um, mainly locally produced, eggs. We will not bring eggs from another continent. But in the case of banana, it will not uh, be uh, picked in, in Croatia. So it comes from uh, another part of the world. So the uh, food print will be much higher. On the uh, bottom here, we have some uh, food that could be eaten as snack. Knowing now that uh, fruits uh, are low in the uh, footprints, so we will expect to have the smallest value here for seasonal fruit. Okay, let's reveal the truth we see that chocolate has a, a high impact, okay, but the highest footprint was here for tropical food. Again, we may think on the slides where the transport has a large impact on the final footprint. So this is the reason why the tropical fruit has even a higher uh, impact than milk chocolate. So we have seen also that one of the strategies of the commission is to produce uh, more organic food. So we have used a software. We have the same category food same food selected but once we have chosen tomatoes and the same product but organic then the distance in miles was the same and we have calculated the food emission and we have here something that shows us that the production emission for organic food in this case was higher. Why? Because in the uh, calculation is included also the land use. 
So uh, we see that here the production had much higher emission than in the case of uh, regular food production. So we have to be aware that we have to recalculate to be able uh, to have some conclusions based on arguments that are given through different numbers and calculations. So uh, we encourage the students on the final level to um, build some conclusion based on facts, on real numbers. So, and on the end, this presentation, if it's used in uh, PowerPoint uh, form, um, gives the literature overview under the slide, under each slide. So here is an example. So you see here, uh, each source presented on the slide is given with uh, some links. So please uh, feel free to use them and to give examples that you would like to present to your students. And on the end, thank you for your uh, attention. And this is our, I hope, student starting with the uh, education level four in a few years that will go green, uh, low transport emission, that will uh, use protein food uh, in other form, and uh, we can go green. We see the example. Thank you.